This is CryptoTube, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm highlighting three cryptocurrencies to have on your radar for the month of July 2021. In this video, we're gonna look at the reasons behind potential price moves in these cryptos. There are catalysts for all three, so I wanna keep them on your guys' radar. We'll watch them, see how the prices develop. But of course, Bitcoin is gonna move this market in either a direction upwards or downwards. So this is not your typical three altcoins to go ahead and buy this month because we are in a turbulent period of time. But nonetheless, if you enjoy the content in today's video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell and give the video a thumbs up. Let's jump into this one. So straight out the gate, we're looking at Ethereum, the number two cryptocurrency. I'm sure it's on everyone's mind right now as there's some big upgrades coming this month in July. Current market cap under one quarter of a trillion dollars and it is roughly half the price it was at its peak point. If we just scroll down, you can see the all-time high back in May, 4,300 bucks minus 52% right now. But what we have coming up is a major improvement proposal and a major hard fork that will go down in the history of Ethereum later this month. And that of course is the London hard fork. So with this London upgrade, we now have EIP 1559 firmly on the horizon and this can make Ethereum deflationary for the first time in its tokenomics. So the current situation, we have it on testnet right now. It was on the Ropsten testnet on June 24th, moved over to the Gurley testnet on June 30th, and then we'll make its final move to the Rinkby testnet on July the 7th. And once these test phases are complete and we have no issues, a final date to move onto the mainnet will then be decided. So within the next week, by July 7th, we should know the final date for this to move onto mainnet. Over on watchtheburn.com, it's currently out of action at this moment in time, but you can see the fee burn and what would occur if EIP 1559 was currently live. Now, what is EIP 1559? I did a full explainer video. I'll leave a card just above in the top right hand corner so you can go and watch that to familiarize yourself. But essentially, this will make the transaction fees more predictable for users. This is gonna be great for user experience. Essentially, this will smooth out some of those spikes that you see in the GUI at certain times when we have peak transaction volumes. It's also gonna reduce the inclusion delays for transactions. So hopefully no more waiting hours and hours and hours for your transactions to go through. So user experience wise, definitely a good thing. And then thirdly, EIP 1559 brings in the fee burn. So this actually creates a positive feedback loop between network usage and the Ethereum supply. So when we have periods of absolute parabola in the markets and you see the GUI price up here go up to like 100, 200, some crazy numbers that we saw a few months back. It's going to mean that the base fee for each of these transactions starts to be burned. And these base fees are going to be high during these peak periods. Of course, Ethereum has layer two scaling solutions, the likes of Arbitrum, which have positively contributed to the gas fees going down as of late. But still, when the masses do arrive, we're going to see big fees and big fee burns. And of course, that means Ethereum during times will be deflationary. More Ethereum will be burnt than is being mined. So for any holder of Ethereum, this is a day to mark in the calendar and something we are very, very excited for. Then we have the rising institutional interest in Ethereum. Just a few hours ago, JP Morgan reported that ETH2 could kickstart a $40 billion staking industry by the year 2025. I'm sure a lot of institutions are already getting involved with Ethereum. They've been red-pilled with Bitcoin and they're moving into ETH. Yield is the name of the game for these institutions and proof of stake cryptocurrencies are a big opportunity right now. So some of the analysts at JP Morgan said this, yield earned through staking can mitigate the opportunity cost of owning cryptocurrencies versus other investments in other asset classes, such as US dollars, US treasuries, or money market funds in which investments generate some positive nominal yield. 
In fact, in the current zero rate environment, we see the yield as an incentive to invest. We're seeing so many news articles recently of big funds moving into crypto, and you best believe Ethereum will be on their radar. We're also seeing an increased number of Ethereum moving to the ETH2 deposit contract. So these are Ethereum that are staking on Ethereum 2.0. And of course, once you commit your Ethereum to this deposit contract, you can't get it back. It's a one-way ticket. And this means over 6 million Ethereum here are already staked with a total value of just over 12, about 12 and a half billion dollars. So quite a lot of ETH already moved over to ETH 2.0. The current circulating supply of Ethereum right now, 116 million. And of course, 6 million of those already locked away over here. So investors are committed to proof of stake. Institutions are eyeing up proof of stake. And the London hard fork is the next major Ethereum event before we move into the back end of the year. And we have the Shanghai upgrade where the merge should take place. So was EIP-1559 getting priced in back in April when there was a lot of hype? Maybe, maybe it has already been priced in with that price point of around 4,300 bucks. As of late, we've seen it pretty much half in price and it was in this downtrend, but recently poked its head above the trend line and has recently tapped it as support. So anything over 2,000 bucks right now does seem to be that Ethereum could be pushing onwards and upwards. Interestingly, when you look at the ETH BTC chart right now, we had that huge parabolic run. These are the historic resistance levels for Ethereum. Level one here at 0 0.04 BTC, level two at 0 0.055, and a third resistance around 0 0.08 BTC. Smash through level one and level two. We then tapped level three right at the start of May. And interestingly enough, we have come down and tested the second resistance as support. So we may have a support resistance flip here, which would be bullish for Ethereum. However, with major upgrades of networks, we often do see sell the news. And so whilst I am very, very bullish on Ethereum in the long term, in the short term, it's going to be wait and see mode to see if the London hard fork, EIP-1559, the fee burn going live, actually positively correlates with some increased price action. But of course, it could be there if it's already been priced in back in April, then happy days, we could be on a nice long road upwards once again. But as I mentioned earlier, Bitcoin will dictate this market, but that is coin number one, it is Ethereum. So the second crypto to have on your radar right now is Woo. This is Woo Network, and they've just brought out their exchange, the Woo X Exchange. Currently sat at a price point of around 60 cents, the market cap 280 million dollars. For a centralized exchange though, and one that could upset the Apple cart, a fully diluted value of 1.8 billion and a market cap of 280 million is relatively cheap. And what I like to see with this chart is the fact that during this down period, it really did make a nice recovery upwards and broke across $1 in mid June. It has had a pullback again recently, but these price levels, people are definitely adding to their Woo stacks. Those who are in the know with Woo are very, very bullish. Over on CoinGecko, they now have the exchange listed on here. So you can actually go ahead and check out all of their markets. They've just got over 40 markets at current and are adding more all the time. And a recurring theme with the Woo platform is that it has a very, very deep liquidity, plugs into many different chains, and a lot of other exchanges actually use Woo for their liquidity. So you can see on here now, Woo Network will be showing up on your favorite top cryptocurrencies exchange to choose from. So CoinGecko will now provide some additional exposure for Woo Network if we just pop over to their medium here and see what is happening in July. Well, towards the end of July, Woo X, the exchange, will fully open up, even to users without an invite code. At this moment in time, you require an invite code to trade on Woo X. You can trade for free on Woo X if you stake some of their tokens on the exchange itself. If you want to get involved, if you're a trader, comment down below and I may have some codes that I can dish out. So if you are a trader and you want to trade for free on WooX and check it out, drop a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. So at the end of July, we have the exchange fully opening up 
at the moment, as I mentioned, just in beta. There will be also a mobile app coming for it and WooX Futures will also be released around the end of the July or early August. This will complete a foundation of products that can satisfy the needs of typical traders. They will then expand their current referral program as well. They have a big marketing budget and I believe you will see this being marketed heavily by influencers over on Twitter and that kind of thing. I think it's going to really be out there in public view. At this moment in time, it's just pretty much people who are already in the know. So what are the benefits of Woo? Zero fee trading for stakers. Yes, that's right. That means you will not have to pay any trading fees if you lock up a certain amount of Woo tokens, and it's not a huge amount either. Plus 50% of all exchange profits go to Woo buyback and burns. This means it is deflationary by nature. They are on your side here. They want the token price to go up by burning tokens. It has some of the best liquidity and lowest slippage throughout all of the dark pools. And it has airdrops of investment proceeds. So they have their own like research arm where they invest into new up and coming projects. And there is a kickback method for the stakers of the Wu token. And this is all backed by Kronos Research. These guys are big quant traders and trade in the region of five to $10 billion worth of crypto on a day to day basis. We jump over to Etherscan here and we just scroll down. Bear in mind that this is still in beta, the burn address down here. So all of these tokens that have burned 7.7 .7 million so far have done so during a period while we have not got the mass appeal as yet. This accounts for 0.25% of the total supply already being burned. So I think over time, there's gonna be a huge amount of Woo being burned and this token will flourish. Here is the staking program over on the left hand side. You can see the tier that I'm currently in around here. You have to have the open beta staking amounts. So to have a free trading, which would be this level across here, 0%, as you can see, you would need to stake 1800 Woo tokens, currently at a price of around 60 cents each. The benefits of moving higher up the staking ranks here is that you get a better APY on the coins that you stake and also better returns from referrals. So here we have the trading dashboard. This interface is rather nice and easily customizable from this button up here. You can add additional charts. You can add your portfolio, a whole range of different things. This is the current setup I've got with three screens across the bottom here. You can see the depth, you can see the order books, and you can see where you can put in your trades. And of course, you can do some TA on here and even expand it out. I've then got a second screen over here where I just hone in on one crypto at a time, as you can see Aave on screen right now. But this is a very nice and easy to use exchange that lets you customize the appearance. So I'm sure for those who are day traders, this will be very appealing indeed. So if you are a day trader and you want to get involved over on Woo, drop a comment down below and I'll see if I can hook you up with a code. Then last but not least, we have a DeFi blue chip. From all the DeFi blue chips out there, I think this one's had one of the biggest hits out of all of them, it has recovered a little bit recently, but it is Compound, Compound Finance, and this is currently around $300. And if we just scroll down here, you can see the all-time high for Comp was around $900 two months ago, a 65% haircut, which does seem a bit over the top, in my opinion. As you can see lately, we've had a bit of an uptick in the price action, nothing to really shout home about right now, but there's good reasons for this. So Compound, similar to Aave, a money market based on Ethereum, but they are making moves and making quite substantial moves in the industry. So the first thing to bring up here, Robert Leshner, the CEO, posted this, excited to see big names like Coinbase enter the dollar yield space so soon after we announced Compound Treasury yesterday. So within this article, they announced the treasury for businesses and institutions. Essentially, this treasury is going to allow these big money players to actually deposit dollars into Compound and earn a 4% yield on those dollars. 
It says it's designed for non-crypto native businesses and financial institutions to access the benefits of the Compound Protocol. So this is in collaboration with Fireblocks and Circle. The Compound Treasury has built a product and flow of funds that enables neobanks, fintech startups, and other large holders of US dollars to access the interest rates available in the USDC market of the Compound Protocol, whilst abstracting away protocol-related complexity like private key management, crypto to fiat conversion, and interest rate volatility. So this is what they're gonna do. They're gonna streamline this process, and it means fintech companies, maybe ones who are offering like 0.01% to their customers, are gonna be able to really shout home about this and say, look, we can offer you 4% now because we've teamed up with Compound Finance. So this will allow the businesses to wire US dollars to the Compound Treasury account and begin earning a guaranteed fixed interest rate of 4% per year. Orders of magnitude higher than the average US dollar saving accounts. And these institutions will be able to fund and withdraw from their accounts anytime with a 24 hour turnaround with low minimums and no maximums and no fixed terms or durations. So this is gonna be auditable each and every month and all this data will be on demand. So this is a big, big move here. And you can think there will be just tons of fintechs out there and neobanks who want to offer their customers a higher rate of yield. And if Compound are going to ensure 4% fixed, there's gonna be a huge uptake for this. So they're really tapping into a big market You've seen the statistics online, trillions of dollars sat in accounts earning little to no yield whilst inflation runs riot. Plus on top of this, their gateway, which is actually the white paper for Compound Chain. So Compound is gonna have its own chain here, a distributed ledger capable of transferring value and liquidity between peer ledgers. So the idea behind this is that instead of using bridge solutions, what they're actually gonna do is allow you to actually borrow and lend on their own native chain. So one chain to rule them all here with Compound. So this is a big move. Traditionally, this is just an Ethereum-based dApp, but they're building out their own chain to offer services on other blockchains, the likes of Polkadot, the likes on Solana and Polygon as examples. So they decided to build this on the Substrate framework so they can focus on building the application code instead of inventing consensus algorithms. They say it's a modern framework built for a modern language of Rust. They see Gateway as evolving into one of the backbone pieces of a global interest rate market capable of supporting any asset. As you can see, they have big ambitions with this, including the wave of currencies, assets, and tokens to be created. I've even heard CBDCs being mentioned, and they are starting to actually test on different blockchains right now. They posted this on one of their forums back in May. There's been a lot of interest in building a gateway starport on Polygon. So let's do it. I suggest we use this thread going forward to organize discussion around the topic. So that was back on May 20th. And if you go through the thread here, you can see they have been pushing out code for a Polygon slash Matic integration for which they are now actively testing. So it seems whatever Aave does, Compound can follow suit. So this will make Compound blockchain agnostic if they create their own chain and it is successful. I'm sure even if they do have hiccups along the road, they will make this a success story. And it does show you that some of these DeFi blue chips really are undervalued right now when you see the scope and the lengths they're gonna to go to to tap into all liquidity across different blockchains and even into traditional finance. So there we have it. Those are the three cryptocurrencies that I've been watching right now and I'm very interested in seeing their updates and how they progress here. We've got a major, major upgrade for Ethereum right now, possibly going deflationary. This is huge for its tokenomics. We have Wu about to open up a fee free trading experience by the end of July for everybody. All you got to do is stake some Wu tokens. I think for many people, the amount of fees they pay in crypto is rather ridiculous. So it's an easy no brainer decision to use an exchange with no fees. And then we have Compound building their own chain, tapping into traditional finance and really making moves as a DeFi blue chip, a force to be reckoned with. So I think we're gonna see huge amounts of money flow into that protocol. But let me know down below your thoughts on this episode and what do you think of these three cryptocurrencies? I'd be very keen to hear what you guys think about this. So comment down below, make sure you subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.